Alright guys, welcome and thank you for selecting the College Money Matters Personal Monthly Spending Plan Workshop. This presentation is sponsored by the Peer Mentor Program at Australia Mountain Community College. And real quick, just a little background about the Peer Mentor Program. It was actually founded in 2008 by students of EMCC. Our mission is to help new and returning students become successful college students by assisting them in developing strong skills for life and college success. With all that being said, Peer mentors are still fellow students, but they can, without a shadow of a doubt, help brainstorm strategies like time management or organization skills. Peer mentors are also knowledgeable about resources on campus and can provide suggestions or options to be successful college students. Right, and before we get started, just a little disclaimer, guys. The information in this workshop is for educational purposes only. The information in this workshop is not to be utilized as financial advice, so don't make any financial decisions based off the information given from this workshop without the assistance of a financial advisor. All right, so let's get started. In this presentation, we will learn how to create a financial five-year plan using SMART goals. We will also identify a five-year goal plan. Alright, so let's break it down guys. What is a SMART goal and what does it stand for? Well, there are many goals we have and to reach them, we have a method referred to as SMART goals. S stands for specific. That's just stating exactly what it is you want to accomplish. M stands for measurable. So basically, it's how you plan on evaluating your progress. And this evaluation is really just there to keep us accountable and to track our success. A stands for achievable, and all that is is just setting a goal that is within reach, yet challenging. Alright, so now we're moving on to relevant. So this is just us making sure that we're taking the appropriate steps for our specific goal. So for example, if I was training to run a 5 mile race, I really wouldn't spend a whole lot of time running 20 yard dashes. Right, because that's kind of counterproductive, because I'm not training to run 20 yard dashes, I'm training to run 5 miles. So that's really what relevant is. It's just making sure that our steps are appropriate for a specific goal. T stands for time bound. I like to call this one my cutoff dates. It's basically just setting a time when you want to have your goal finished. And quite honestly guys, this is probably one of the most crucial parts in the SMART goal process. How many of you guys would go up to someone you like and ask them to go out to the movies? And they say, yeah, sure. And then you're like, okay, cool, see you later. What? what are you talking about so are we meeting tonight or over the weekend like what's going on here you just don't do it you're gonna give them a time a day you're gonna at least call them that's exactly the same concept with the smart goals um, your goal wants to know exactly when you want to get the goal done so that's the concept here all right so in the previous slide we talked about smart goals and the importance they can have in helping us be successful in reaching our goals this slide will take us through the steps in setting a SMART goal that has to do with our finances. Right, so let me just break this down for you guys. This worksheet is just going to ask you guys a list of questions that really just help you pinpoint your specific goal. And it's just going to help you polish it so it's a little bit more clear to you and more attainable. Alright, so the first question here it says write down your goal in as few as words as possible. So I'm just going to do an example for you guys. My goal is to buy a dirt bike. Okay, cool. Because I want a dirt bike. All right. So step two, make your goal detailed and specific. Answer who, what, where, how, and when. All right. So how will you reach this goal? List at least three action steps you'll take. Be specific. Okay. So how will I reach it? Well, uh, I'm going to need a job in order to buy a dirt bike. So that's going to be my first one. Work part time at Target cool because I'm going to school still so I'm working part-time all right okay so the second one how am I gonna reach this goal so let's see I'm going to need a savings plan in order to keep track of my finances and in order to save up so I'm gonna write down a savings plan uh, $50 a month and then for the third one let's see well I'm gonna need to look on Craigslist right because I'm trying to be budget friendly and I'm gonna need to find a durable dirt bike right okay so that's what I'll put for the third one look on Craigslist and familiarize myself uh, with the different types of dirt bikes available. So for the third step, make sure your goal is measurable. Add details, measurements, and tracking details. So basically, how am I going to track my goals? Let's see. Well, I'm going to come up with a savings plan. I'm going to save uh, 50 bucks a month for five years. Okay, and then that's just going to give me $4,000 at the end of five years 
which is about the average amount a dirt bike cost. And I know that I've reached my goal when I have $4,000 saved up. So that's what I'll put for that uh, question right here. And then step four guys, make sure your goal is obtainable. So what additional resources do you need for this success? So items I need to achieve this goal. Well, I'm gonna need a driver's license, right? Cause I plan on making this street legal. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna need a driver's license. I have no idea how to ride a dirt bike right now, but I really want one. So that's gonna be one thing that I'm going to put down for items that I need to achieve this goal, right? Driver's license. And then how I'll find the time. Well, I'll find the time to work uh, to save money for this dirt bike by being productive when I'm at school and getting all my homework done in a timely manner so I'll have time to go to work so work won't be impeding on my studying time. And the things I need to learn more about, so I'm going to say, let's see, learn more about the upkeep and maintenance of a dirt bike. Okay, check. And then people I can talk to for support. Let's see, my dad knows how to ride motorcycles. He rides motorcycles all the time. So I'm gonna go ahead and put down my dad uh, to be a member of my support group. How generous of me. <laughs> Step five, make sure your goal is relevant. List why you want to reach this goal. So I want to get a dirt bike because it's fuel efficient and it's good for the economy. That's my reason I'm sticking to it. All right, and then step six, make your goal timely. Put a deadline on your goal. So I want to have this dirt bike in five years because that's how long it's going to take me to save up $4,000, right? And so that's basically the process uh, of this whole entire worksheet, guys. It's just to go through, fill out all these questions to the best of your ability. And this is just to help you pinpoint your goal and just to polish everything so your goal is a little bit more clear. All right, so we're going to use the financial smart goal on this side. Let's take time to reflect on what our goal is and where we are now. So let me ask you guys a question. How much money needs to be saved to be able to reach this said goal? All right, you guys have that number in your head? Cool, cool. Let's keep that number in mind as we look at the next few slides. All right, so now on this slide, we have our five-year financial plan sample. And this worksheet is honestly a pretty tremendous resource to have if you're searching for different ways to save or pay off loans in a time efficient manner. This worksheet is broken up into columns and rows. And if you look at the rows on the right hand side, those are your goal columns. And the thing is about this five year plan is that we're actually working backwards. So we're actually starting from year five in our five year goal plan and we're working our way down until we reach year one. I know it's a little different, but I'll walk you guys through one so we can kind of just get the hang of it. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this one, for example, right? The pay off school loans. All right, so that's our goal in this one, pay off school loans. And then we wanna have $27,200 saved up at the end of five years. And this one is uh, no interest included. Like I said before, this is a scenario, just to kind of give you guys an accurate average. The average student loan debt for bachelor degree approaches $30,000. So this one's a little bit less, but since it's just a scenario, we can go ahead and go with it. All right, so what we're gonna do with this first one is remember how I said that we're gonna work backwards. So you're gonna take that 27,000 and 200, right, that we wanna have, you're gonna take that, enter it into your calculator, so 27,200, and then you're gonna times that by five, because five is the number of years that we want to have $27,200 saved up. Okay, so go ahead and times that by five, and then it's gonna give you this number, and that number is gonna be the amount that you need uh, yearly. So the number that I got was $5,440. So $5,440 is the exact amount of money that we need each year for five years to reach $27,200. Okay, that's great. Now let's go ahead and figure out how much we need monthly. Well, how do we do that? Well, you're just going to take that $5,440 and then you're going to divide that by 12 right because there's 12 months in a year and that's going to give you 453 dollars 33 cents and that's going to be the amount you need monthly right so now we have the yearly amount we need to have and then we have the monthly amount we need to have right so we have all we need now so we know that we need to get 453 dollars 33 saved up each month 
right? If we do that for a whole year, that's going to give us 5,440, okay? And if we keep on doing that each year, it'll bring us closer and closer and closer until we finally reach $27,200 to pay off our student loan. So that's basically how this process works. It's really just working backwards. And as you work backwards, that number is going to get smaller, right? You see 27,200, and that turns into 21,760. That turns into $16,320. That turns into $10,880, and then so on and so forth until you reach your desired amount. All right, so on the previous slide, we went through the sample sheet. Now let's go ahead and give it a try on our own. All right, so let me give you guys an example here. I want to have $3,000 saved up for emergency funds. That's my goal, right? So I'm going to put emergency funds right in here and then $3,000 because that's how much I want. And I want to have that $3,000 saved up by the end of five years. All right, so what do we do? We write down $3,000 in the goal column, right? And then we take that $3,000 and then we divide it by what? We divide it by five, right? Okay, so we take that $3,000 and then we divide it by five, right? Because there's five years in this goal plan. And we take that, right? And so we divide 3,000 by five, and that's gonna give us 600. So 600 is the amount that we need yearly right so we need 600 in 2019 600 in 2018 600 in 2017 and so on and so forth until 2015 okay so 600 is what we need yearly now that's cool how do we figure out how much we need monthly well you just take that 6,000 and divide it by 12 right because there's 12 months in a year and when you take 600 divided by 12 you're going to get 50 so you need to save 50 dollars each month for a whole year to reach that 600, right? So each month we need to save $50 uh, a month, right? So for each month we need to save $50. And over the course of time, it's going to bring us closer and closer and closer until we reach 2015. And then we'll have a total of $3,000 saved up. It's not that bad, right? Once we break it down like that, uh, anyone can say, oh man, I want to save $3,000, but that's so much money right now. I don't know how to start. Well, this is an awesome resource to have, right? Because when we break it up into little increments like this, it doesn't seem that bad. We can save $50 a month. We just have to be diligent. All right, so you guys can go ahead and fill out this worksheet and feel free to reference back to the previous slide just so you guys have something to base uh, information off of. All right, I would like to thank you for taking the time to view this presentation and feel free to watch the other two videos in our College Money Matter series. As always, this is the Pure Mentor Program, signing off. I'll see you guys.